Hey guys. So how are you doing today? Me? I'm doing wonderful. I decided I'm gonna use, I'm gonna start trying to learn how to use joystick. I already know I used to play Illusion 2 a while ago. Back in the day when people played that game. And I have a pretty decent joystick setup. Got all three of my axes down. And I figured I'd start with one of the most difficult planes to fly with joystick. And that is the Arrow Cobra. But I also, I, I immediately, I immediately tried to do an inverted vertical reversement, which you need the prop torque to do that. And the Arrow Cobra also wasn't actually capable of doing it. Uh, the Mustang's the only plane I can think of off the top of my head that could do it. But because prop torque isn't simulated in realistic battle, you need to go into full reel for that, or to simulator or whatever it's called now. And I, I'm a shitty spotter, so I need my, I need my markers. <laughs> So I'm just going to be doing joystick and realistic. But I discovered an interesting trick that this plane is capable of doing, and I'm 95% certain it wasn't actually capable of it. But I don't I don't know what I'm going to name it. It's de it's definitely not one of the standard air combat maneuvers. I mean, like, uh, Pokachev's Cobra, or whatever, whatever his first name was, with that much more modern air combat maneuver, it's sort of like that, but a little different. Uh, let's see if I can do it again. Uh... <laughs> It's so easy to do. It the plane doesn't exactly come out of its stable, but you will note I lost over 50 miles per hour in seconds. <laughs> and I can do it. I can do it regularly. It's not like I'm throwing it into a random stall and I have no idea how it's going to come out. I know exactly how the plane's going to come out. It's going to come out in the exact same direction I entered it, and it knocks about 50 miles per hour off your speed in fragments of a second because this plane doesn't have air brakes. So, I mean, you need maneuvers like this. Let's see if I can do it again. Oh, oh I didn't I didn't wait long enough before I counter rotated. And I lost absolutely zero speed in that maneuver. Need to stop accidentally kicking whip on. It actually tends to do it better at high speeds. At low speeds it tries to go into a proper spin, which isn't exactly what I'm intending to do. All right, 3 Two, one, help me, Jesus! Wow! Oh, I overdid it. Oh, I overdid it. I overdid it badly. Oh, and then I almost did it again. Yep, this plane. Oh, she is not. She is not a friendly one. She does not enjoy my mischief. <laughs> so yeah, it's not the it's not the best, but oh, one of these days I'm gonna get good at it. The one, the one real problem I seem to be having is my inability to hit things. Oh yeah, this plane doesn't do high angle of attack maneuvers with, with any form of kindness. Dip, 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 dip. Tends to bob and weave a lot, which is nice, but it makes accuracy not easy. Let's see if I can do it to the left. Da -da -da. Yep. Uh -oh. Just like so. And I have no idea why it tried to stall the engine. <laughs> it is such a goofy little plane. Let's do it from a front view. <laughs> it is such an easy maneuver to do, too, compared to most of them. And so basically what I'm doing, I'm going to start using aeronautical terms now. So those of you who don't know ailerons from elevators probably aren't going to understand this, but... I'm using absolutely no aileron. If you try and use ailerons in a stall like that, it'll actually just make it horribly worse. All I'm doing is I'm pulling up pretty much as hard as you can to force it into a high stall, and then I'm ruddering in the direction I want it to rotate. And because the Aerocopter's elevator is so strong, it forces it to basically a 90 degree angle of attack, so it's traveling bottom first, presenting the entire profile of the aircraft to the wind, so it's creating a huge amount of drag, and then it just rotates around in whichever direction you rudder. So I'm pulling up really hard and ruddering right. Then to stop it, I rudder back to the left and nose down. And I just try and catch it and stabilize it. And there you go, that was that that one was quite violent. So let's see if I can do it, come out, then immediately attack that vehicle. Right up, then rudder the opposite direction and nose down. And there you go, I'm much slower than I used to be. I'm also nowhere near as close to the target as I intended. Let's try a machine gun pass. Uh, go, oh my god. <laughs> the second you pull the trigger, it kicks quite hard. And I'm not even firing... I'm not even firing the cannon. Yeah, you gotta be ready to try and counter that. Alright. 
Let's try it. Whoa, not so hard. Let's try a nice sharp but not stalling loop. Oh, I'm stalling. Oh, well, that actually worked out quite well. I didn't roll intentionally. That was that was one of the wings stalling. <laughs> that was completely out of my control. Oil temperature doesn't seem to want to go down, but nah, who cares. So let's try and derp it. Yep. Yep. Derp. Ho oh, ho! That was 95% luck. So let's see if I can do it at low altitude without killing myself. The answer appears to be yes. Oh my god, I'm out of speed. Holy crap. Oh crap. Oh crap. Oh shite. Holy shit. <laughs> that was about 50 times as effective as I would have hoped. So it seems the faster you're going, the more speed you'll kill. And it looked like I went from about 300 miles per hour to 150 miles per hour in, what, a second and a half? That's, that's what? That's like 7 Gs. <laughs> The 7G deacceleration. Yeah, that's pretty. That's quite a lot more powerful than the MiG 15's air brakes. That's a lot more powerful than the Sabre's air brakes. Wow. All right. So that's a that's a not a very useful maneuver to be honest. You could use it to make someone overshoot, but it leaves you extremely low on energy and in a very vulnerable position. So it's one of those. If um, let's say you're going up against the not the Russians, you're going up against the Germans, and a 190 is diving on you and you're at relatively low altitude. I wouldn't do it at sea level. If you do it at ground level, you're going to end up doing 150 miles per hour on the deck, and whoever took a pass on you is just going to high yo you, you come back around and kill you. So it's a delaying tactic at the best, but it's a very flashy, interesting-looking one. And it's really nice to show off your skill at parties. <laughs> All right, I'll do it again. We're going to do another super low altitude one and I'm gonna screw it up and then I'm gonna crash. Not on purpose, trust me, it will be an accident. I can only do this so many times before before <laughs> the force of gravity takes over and the force of my luck running out completely. Let's miss that tree. All right, three, two, one, to the left. Yep. <laughs> oh shit, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, see what I mean? It's only a matter of time when it comes to me. <laughs> Alright, so that was... I don't know what I'm going to call that. Um, a vertical flat spin? I don't, I don't know. Anyway. And in case... Just in case that air combat maneuver actually is already named. Then it's named whatever it was named. I just haven't heard about it yet. So take care. Have fun. Um, don't play the Aero Cobra with joystick. It's extremely difficult.